So the first thing we're hearing is Kelly Olynyk is expected to have a robust trade market. We're hearing from KSL Sports. Now, basically what they are saying is that there's a lot going on with the Utah Jazz. They're definitely selling more than they were last uh, last season around this time as their season isn't going as well as it was last year. Now, the guy that has been drawing the most interest or the one that is getting the most calls is Mr. Kelly Olenek. Kelly Olenek this season is averaging about eight points in 20 minutes a night. It's nothing to set the world on fire about specifically 22 minutes a night, eight points a game, 56% from the field, 41% from three, five five and a half rebounds, just under five assists a game and a steal a night. He's a guy that in 27 games back in the 20 to 21 season, he did average 19 points a night for the Houston Rockets. And Kelly Olenek's kind of a do-it-all big who can play both forward positions, both the, the four and the five. He is a perimeter oriented big, but he's a guy who loves the spot up the three. He can, you know, handle the rock a bit, put it on the floor. He's a decent playmaker and he's, you know, actually a decent front court player. He's really good off the bench as an offensive instant offensive microwave player. He would be really good for a playoff contending team. He's got a bunch of tricks in his arsenal and the thing is is his goodness like his like best playing ability is inconsistent as he sometimes fades into the background but he's a guy who's going to provide a little bit of everything he's only making 12.1 so a lot of teams that need you know depth for the playoffs especially in a combination of some big man help and some offensive firepower they are going to be looking at kelly olenek Again, Kelly Olynyk is probably going to cost the team salary filler and a pick of probably one or two second rounders or a young prospect that has some time, some years left on his rookie scale contract. But besides that, I expect a contending team like the Boston Celtics, for example, or the Dallas Mavericks to go out and get a guy like Kelly Olynyk. Yo, what's going on, guys? And today we're talking about the Boston Celtics who are monitoring Kelly Olynyk's availability. They do have a $6.2 million trade exception from the Grant Williams trade. So that is $6.2 million that they can use in a trade to get themselves Kelly Olynyk if they were interested. Now, Kelly Olynyk does make more than $6 million, so they would have to send matching or salary filler to match the salary. So the Boston Celtics, as you guys know, have been reportedly looking to upgrade their bench depth before the NBA trade deadline via either a trade or a buyout candidate. Now, Boston allegedly has been looking for a familiar face to potentially join as a front court reinforcement. Kelly Olenek is a guy that they're interested in bringing in. Kelly Olenek is in the final year of his deal with the Utah Jazz. He played his first four seasons after being a first round pick by the Boston Celtics. Now, this season he's primarily been a reserve, the six foot 11 front court player who can play both the four and the five position is averaging 7.9 points, five and a half rebounds, four and a half assists, and 21 and a half minutes a night. Now, he is shooting 55% from the field and 42% from behind the arc. The one thing, like I said, is a blow roadblock is the salary. Now, Olenek is making 12.2. So basically, the trade exception, Peyton Pritchard and Sam Hauser are the easiest way for that deal to work. Any other deal would be difficult for the Boston Celtics to match his salary without trading a key or a current rotational player as Boston's other option would have to be combined the salaries of several minimum players like Svi Mikhailu, um, Delano Banton, um, I believe, who else could we throw in there? Uh, it becomes, that becomes very, very, very convoluted on who you think they should get rid of. Damn, because you start thinking the salaries you need the all right, 6.2 so that means you need to literally find 6 million and the next one would have to be Luke Cornette that's 2.4 Svi Mikhailu Svi Mikhailu gets you to 4.7 and then you throw in O'Shea Brissett and that gets you to 6.8 
Now, if you don't want to throw in Luke Cornett, you take out Luke Cornett and you're at 4.4, so you still need to find one and a half million dollars to send, and that one and a half million would have to be like Delano Banton, Lamar Stevens, Speed Mikhail Lou, or O'Shea Brissett. So, I mean, that's the easiest way with the trade exception. Now, you have to wait till those guys are tradable, but would you guys do it? And, like, obviously, a pick would have to be involved, or several, like, like either is it a second round, first round pick? Like, what gets the deal there? That's definitely up to interpretation. But what do you guys think? I think it's definitely interesting to look at. And I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. I don't know what's going to happen. And that's why I want to hear your guys' opinions, what you guys think will happen. But, yeah, the Boston Celtics are monitoring Kelly Olenek like they rightfully should. Now, will it lead to anything? Who knows? Truthfully, who knows if it will, but... It's a, it's a cool story, to say the least. And I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I want to see Kelly Olenek back in Boston. Who didn't like Kelly Olenek and Kelly? Is it Kelly Green, technically? I don't even know. Um, yeah. Kelly Olenek, what a, what a story. Brought a story if he does come back. The Canadian. You also don't realize like how hype like, Kelly Olenek was coming out of college or like coming out and going to Gonzaga. He was like one of the like big recruits that like when he went to Gonzaga originally. Crazy story, but fun guy. He's supposed to be like game changing good. People don't realize like, but that he was supposed to be one of the greatest players in Canadian history. But that's all I got for you guys. I hope you guys did enjoy like comment and subscribe. Till next time, guys. Pop peace out. Bye bye. Cheers, everybody. So the Jazz are reportedly willing to trade Jordan Clarkson, Colin Sexton, Kelly Olenek, and John Collins. Rival executives believe that the Utah Jazz are willing to trade these players, according to Mark Stein of the Stein Line. Clarkson signed a two-year deal this past summer. Can't be traded until January seventh. The 24-year-old Sexton has been a frequent target of trade rumors. Executive believes that Kelly Olenek is the most likely to be traded out of the three as he will be a free agent this summer. And the Jazz are also reportedly trying to move on from John Collins, according to Andy Larson. The 26-year-old has the lowest on-court slash off-court splits of any rotational player on the Utah Jazz. And the Utah Jazz have been frustrated with his slow uptake take of learning the Jazz system on both ends of the floor, including offense and defense. He's missed his third straight game due to a non-COVID illness. He's averaging 14.5 points and 8.6 rebounds, really besides rebounding and some floor spacing he has provided much i think colin sexton could go to a young team like the bulls because it makes sense if they they're trying to move on from zach levine he could be the zach levine replacement now kelly olenek i agree i think a contending team like the los angeles lakers like the idea actually of kelly olenek and colin sexton being packaged for rui hachimura and gabe vincent and jackson hayes and some second round picks is actually a good one and then I think Jordan Clarkson goes to a contender that's like, hey, we suck at scoring off the bench. Like like Boston, who's the worst, only scores 25 points per game off the bench. Philly scores 27 a night. Rockets and the Suns score 29, and so do the Cavs. So you sit there and you're like, dude, Jordan Clarkson scores 20 points himself. Okay? All those teams would literally turn around and become probably one of the best, you know, off the bench scoring teams in the league if you're able to keep the, the roster together and bring in a guy like Jordan Clarkson. So I just, I feel like the Utah Jazz are a team that people are going to be calling all the time. I, I don't know. What do, what do you think? When you look at Lowry marketing, they're saying that a team, one, two or three teams are going to attempt to try to pry him off of the Utah Jazz, according to Mark Stein and then Andy Larson saying, that he believes that the the Jazz are going to keep him around long term. I I think it's definitely interesting because I think they're just looking at this year and they're like, okay, maybe we can just say this year's a wash. Get rid of like all these extra dudes we have on the roster. 
We like Keontae George. We like Walker Kessler. We like Ochai Abashi. We like Simone Fontecchio. Let's move on from John Collins. That was always a reclamation project to begin with. So I think this just puts them in a situation where they're like, okay, things might have not worked out the way that we initially thought they were going to work out, but it's not the end of the world is what I'm thinking. And, and I think they're just looking at, let's capitalize off of the assets we have right now uh, because we're bad. Let's continue being bad. And hopefully next year, even though this isn't the best draft class, hopefully next year we're a bit more of a competitive team and that way we can, you know, I don't know, just be in the running of, for things playoff wise. I think with this, it's they're trying to mimic the New York Knicks a few years ago before the Knicks became a playoff team. They got themselves Julius Randle. And a lot of people would have thought the same way that people look at Larry Markkinen and are like, why? Why are we building around a guy who's like 27? You know, he's not really on the same timeline as Taylor Hendricks, Ochai Baji, Keontae George, Walker Kessler. But fast forward a few years, everyone would say now the New York Knicks are the team most likely to land a superstar because they have the draft assets, because they have the players, and B, they can trade all those things and still have enough players to have a contender where they say Julius Randle and Jalen Brunson, RJ Bear, whoever you want to put it, are good twos and threes to whoever they believe could be a true one. Now, I agree with you, Larry Markkinen I don't think is a one, so I don't think, you know, that's why I think they they want to build around Lowry because having a guy like Lowry and hopefully Keontae George takes that step or Taylor Hendricks or Walker Kessler or Ochai Abaji or whoever it is and then they're able to go ahead and start enticing a, a, an actual superstar to come be Batman next to the Robin that is Lowry Marketing and whoever else is there and then that way they can go out and you know maybe actually contend for a championship and they have a core built together to contend sooner rather than later that's just my thought on the whole thing because i see the knicks no i agree with that yeah and that's the problem mm -hmm. 